is staggering. I mean, it, it really, it, people are so warm, so generous, and it's hard not to like you and want to back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to say no more because I'm a relative newcomer to all this, so I feel a little, little bit, a little bit um, of fraud. Yeah. I, I just sit down. Can I ask uh, Mr. Abdurrahman to go ahead and go on? Thank you very much. Is, just before I, I, I introduce my best friend, as Ray said, is just a, a thing to add. Of course, is, uh, um, Ray said is um, uh, uh, how Joe Johnson and, and her brother look at after all the Sudanese guys. But everybody sitting on the table there, listening to Siobhan, where she recalls every, every single <laughs> Sudanese guy who came over here, when and what he done, and where he is now, and this is absolutely uh, And um, the second thing that is, uh, the, uh, I worked for Mr. Joe Johnson when he was about to retire. And at the time, the, the was, this was the just start of the laparoscopic surgery. Did he give up? No. He actually learned and mastered the laparoscopic surgery before I just retired. Then I worked for Mr. Brown again just before he retired. We started the, the soracoscopic sympathectomies with High Brown in Blanchestown, and, was, and, and we were only the first one to use the small uh, laparoscope, 1.9 millimeters to go by lateral sympathectomy at the time. This is just before they, they retire, like, but it's, it's always teaching people to. Uh, coming to my uh, best friend, um, <laughs> Ahmed Fahad, is um, again another another man, a great man with a, a real excellent vision and who used to act in vision. Long ago, Professor Omar Bilal, one of our teachers, he said, this boy is different. This ages ago, <laughs> and what a dumb And my friend Ahmed, at the end of the day, proved to be different from us. Um, just a few years back, um, uh, uh, Professor Peter Gillen uh, forwarded his CV to the college um, uh, just uh, to be honored by the, um, an honorary fellowship. And um, the late Professor uh, Jerry O'Sullivan looked at his CV and he said, well, this, this, this guy should not really go for honorary fellowship. This guy is a surgeon who is doing real work. Honorary fellowship goes for president of something or king of somewhere, but this is a surgeon. He should come in as a, a fellow in this college. And he was, and his recognition of the work, was honored that, and then the Royal College of Surgeons in England, they, they honored him afterwards, the Royal College of Physicians, done. Ahmed is, is of Dublin, and he's the Vice Dean Faculty of Dentistry Royal College of Surgeon in Ireland. But and he's an examiner in the Intercollegiate Fellowship in Restorative Dentistry. But the most important thing, apart from all these things, Osama Lamin is a Sudanese president, is a president of Sudanese community in Ireland. And he is our colleague, but he is acting as our father. He's acting our support. Whenever we need anything, we need advice. Everybody will go to Osama, even the doctor or non-doctor. He has got a lot of effort among the Sudanese community here in Ireland. The, the school here, the school, Sudanese school here in uh, Castlenock, actually have been looked after all these years from 1991 or 1992 by Osama al-Amin. And Osama is still doing a lot of things here and there. Osama is going every three or four months to Sudan. And actually, he started the uh, Institute of Dentistry for the second part examination in Sudan last year. And it's actually the first, they achieved the first result in all over the world now. And actually, they have been here when they came there to their fellowship. And actually, we honor them here in this room this year. Osama, actually, if I want to talk about Osama, it is an endless talk. Because his deeds talk about him, not my tongue or my speech. Is 
what the Sudanese people and Sudanese doctors keep to Osama and the respect for Osama. Osama will be happy to be all of this. Uh, Sheikh Osama, Back from Sudan. Yeah, just now. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you, I am humbled daily by this. Um, I've just arrived towards from Sudan. I went there as an examiner for uh, two PhD candidates, and we run a course for the second part of the fellowship, which will be in January. As I have said, we managed to establish a fellowship center in Sudan for the uh, MFD RCSI examination, which allowed so many people to sit this exam and to attain this degree, where before they couldn't do it for various reasons, of course, uh, financial being one, and uh, also availability of places for training and all that. And we managed to establish actually a recognized training center in Khartoum, which is recognized by the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland here, to give people a real experience really uh, in dentistry. And when I talk about experience, I always, I always remember a very famous Irish writer, James Joyce, who defined experience as doing the same mistake again and again with increasing confidence. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what being <laughs> very true in medicine and dentists are not. That's <laughs> it. Um, again, I appreciate this and thank you very much for that and I wish you all well. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, thanks out everyone for coming. Thanks uh, for coming us and I know it was a very short uh, notice to attend this uh, function, but we were very grateful that you managed uh, to do it. We'll have a five minutes break, and then we will all be back, where Professor Ahmed is going to tell us about uh, all about his work in uh, mycetoma, from the bench uh, to the bedside, and all the work in the research center as well. So just a five minutes, quick water, if somebody has a dry throat, and uh, we'll meet you in five minutes, OK? Don't go away. Thank you. in the medical school. And Ahmed didn't live in the mess when we were interns and SHU because their house was near the hospital. He didn't live in the mess. What cost government any yeah. trouble? <laughs> and, uh, and if you know uh, Ahmed, Ahmed was dedicated to uh, surgery. I uh, to surgery when he started, and he was dedicated to research. And I remember when we were started as registrar, I am ahead of Ahmed, but Ahmed started his training uh, before us. Uh, we were working somewhere around, but he stayed in Khartoum in Sova University Hospital. Yeah. And we went to Rosaris and Damazin and all the places, right? <laughs> small, yeah, 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 small hospital. When we came back, he was already established registrar, had his first part. And uh, um, when we were looking at him every day sitting there, and he would have about 10 uh, British General of Surgeries, um, you know, for the, the whole year uh, piled sitting there, and he would be on call and he'd be reading all this. So um, he dedicated uh, his time to research, to education, uh, to teaching. And uh, no, like, um, uh, um, and it all evolved into a Professor Ahmed, Ahmed Hassan Fahal. He is the professor of surgery at the University of Khartoum. He is the leading authority, one of the leading authorities in mycetoma in the world. Welcome, Jan, you're going to give us your talk about <coughs> how we feel out. Thank you. <coughs> 
can I have the light off, please? <coughs> the light off, please. I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to I don't know if you're going to be able to do this. I don't know if you're going to be to to give this talk to this highly reputable society, union, colleagues, students. I'm really very much honored to be honored this afternoon with this um, Great honor. I was not expecting actually to have this honor, uh, but I feel I'm part of the few and really I'm very much thrilled to be here <coughs> this, uh, this afternoon. I'm going to talk about, I thought to give a talk about mycetoma in general, but that will take a long time and you know a lot of the facts about mycetoma, but I would like to talk about the Mycetoma Research Center at University of Khartoum, which is based at Soba University Hospital, <coughs> trying to talk about the aspiration and the reality we are facing at the center there. This is Dublin. Honored to be here again in this nice city. I'm not sure where it is placed, but I Googled it yesterday. I found it. It was a very nice scenery here. Trinity College. Okay, this is, this is something good. <clears throat> uh, hopefully, the objective of this presentation will be to highlight the activities, the achievements of the Mycetoma Research Center, trying to link the practice with evidence, with research, and with performance. <clears throat> the other objective of this presentation Actually, it is to talk about the impact of the Mycetoma Research Center on mycetoma as a medical and a socioeconomic dilemma worldwide, not specifically or in particular for the Sudan. <coughs> and again, trying to link the evidence and the practice and the performance. Hopefully, the content of this talk will be the establishment of the center, the justification for the center, and then the objective to highlight the achievements and then the future plans. And I'm going to conclude by saying that mycetoma it is one of the badly neglected problems. Mycetoma is neglected by us as a clinicians, by the state, by the society, and by the community. And I'm going to conclude by saying that my stoma, it is a scar, and our job, it is to heal that scar, and it is another scar in the human conscious, and our job, it is to heal it. The history of mycetoma is both long and interesting. <clears throat> it is well known during the Mahdiya time, but the first scientific article was in 1904. And he reported, Plummer, he reported, Belfort reported on the first case of mycetoma and a patient coming from the south of Sudan, and in particular, he came from Bor. And since then, there were a lot of research done on mycetoma. But I would like to highlight the impact of Henry Welcome, the owner of the Henry um, Welcome Trust in England. He had a boat on the Nile going all the way to northern Sudan, southern Sudan, collecting material, doing research. And eventually, this gentleman, he came, he came from the state. Then he, came, he settled in England. He came to Sudan, and eventually he went to Jebel Moya in central Sudan, where he established a lab at the top of the hill there. The building is still there, but only the, the walls are there, 
and some signs showing that he was dead in 19, oh, 1918, I think that. <clears throat> then Abbott, he was a surgeon at Medney Hospital, McKinsey, Lynch, and Taylor. They had a lot of impact on my stoma in the Sudan. And this is Julian Taylor, he was a professor of surgery. He was the first to give the idea of establishing a clinic for the mastoma patients because they were very much neglected during that time. <clears throat> In the 70s, Professor Mahjoub, Professor Sami Yuma, and Professor Hassan did a great work on mastoma. In fact, they established a clinic at Khartoum North at the uh, Hagia Safi Medical Center, and that was the first mastoma clinic. Every Monday, they see a lot of patients there. They did a lot of research. <clears throat> they had a lot of impact on the patients and the care of this patient. Remember Babike Reis, <coughs> Abdurrahman, and Murtada? You know this place? And in this place, <clears throat> we had a clinic, and that was the first mastoma clinic at Khartoum Teaching Hospital. It was very small, miserable clinic there. And then to, we moved to Soba in 1991, where we established a small center in a small room. At, that was the recovery room of the endoscopy unit at Soba Hospital. And then we started working in my stoma. And this is the my stoma center <coughs> recently. That was one of the patient department <coughs> I saw. This is our patient clinic now, <clears throat> patient waiting area. This is one of the clinics. This is the information center. See how miserable these patients. <clears throat> this is the lab. <clears throat> this is the native treatment through which most of the patients have experience with. This is the ward inside the hospital. <clears throat> this is the technique of, of um, cytology.
health education session. <coughs> This is our um, native treatment museum at the center there. Traditional treatment. You see the lab. <clears throat> right. Um, sorry. The justification of the mycetoma disease center, it is a common health problem in the Sudan. It is commonly seen in the central part of the country, Jazeera area, the White Niles, northern Darfur, northern Kordofan, and eastern part of the country. Mycetoma is seems to Sudan is seems to be the mycetoma home center, and the disease is badly neglected in Sudan, in spite of the fact that it is the home homeland of mycetoma. It is neglected, as I mentioned, by us as a clinician, by the society, by the state, and by the community, and the patient themselves, because it is not a glorious disease. Even a lot of us as a clinician, they say that my stomach is not my cup of tea or my not cup of coffee. The patients are miserable, they have a lot of problems, they are very poor society uh, members, and they have a lot of problems. Again, because it is not a glorious disease. One of the important justification of the center of the center that is still the management of mycetoma, it is not adequate. Patients are giving the wrong treatments for a long time with a lot of side effects. It affects young patients. More than 30% of our patients are less than 40 years of age. Most of them are young patients like this. They are the most active part of the society, especially underdeveloped countries. An important justification, <coughs> mycetoma, it is a common health problem in many rural areas in the Sudan. In one village we recently visited, there were around 70 cases out of 2,000 cases had mycetoma infection. And by the way, this list was prepared by the, by the villages themselves. They know the mycetoma, they know what is it, and they, they collected this number of patients. 70 cases in one village. The important issue about this center, it is dealing with patients with low socioeconomic status. This is one of our patients came into the clinic with this vehicle, amputated, and is still coming for follow-up. This is the type of our patients. They come all the way from Eastern Sudan. They stay outside the clinic, spending the night there, until the next morning they come for the clinic at this site. It's still in my stoma, in many centers, amputation, it is the appropriate treatment for them. They come very late with very active disease, massive secondary bacterial infection, complete bone destruction, tissue disruption, a lot of social impact, and they prefer to have amputation. Just imagine this lady, she is very happy after the amputation, which is a social stigma in Sudan still. Even the prosthesis after the amputation, it is not commonly available in this patient. A prosthesis like this, it is a luxury for this group of patients. So she's happy about, about this. Important justification, my stoma has a high morbidity and can be fatal. And this is a child with my stoma invading the skull and the brain. This is a very unique patient, he had a mycetoma of the foot, he had a blown knee amputation, he had a recurrence, he had a above knee amputation, he had a recurrence, he had a recurrence in the stump, and then he developed a mass in the abdomen and he developed a massive mycetoma, intra-abdominal mycetoma, with a vesical, vesical, vesical invasion, and he had a cystoscopy and showed multiple grains inside the bladder inside. That was in the other presentation. <clears throat> 
it can be as massive as this. Imagine how this, they cannot walk. He was carried inside this, <coughs> in, 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 inside the center. Yes. This is the morbidity. He cannot walk properly. It was very painful movement. Young lady, that is the end of her career. She cannot get married, she cannot do any social activities after that. This patient had a low health education level, and you can see she started to socialize, but still she is leaving the area of the mastoma unstained. They start to adapt themselves, these patients. Just imagine this dressing on one of the patient, piece of carton. This is the dressing, all the way coming from the Jazeera area, and this is the type of dressing he's having there. <coughs> They are lagging health support, <coughs> social support, and lagging a lot of support. She cannot even climb the stairs, this young lady, supported by two of the members of the family at this side. And it can be a preventable condition. The objective of the center is to look after these patients, to provide a good care and management, conduct a research, and then teaching, learning, and education for undergrad and postgraduate and for community development activities. We saw around 6,500 patients in the clinic there. This is the old clinic. I am proud to say that we are having patients from overseas. We are having patients from Saudi Arabia, from Yemen, from Somalia, from, from Chad, from Ethiopia, and thanks for the nets. Now we're having patients from India, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, and from the state, and we're giving some advice through the Skype, and we're always having emails telling us about <coughs> patients there and asking for advice about this. Uh, 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 an important thing we are providing this patient with advice on medical treatment, with surgery, with health education, and we are trying to give them some support. Uh, uh, an important thing that now we are having a well-trained young colleagues <coughs> in the center there that are dealing with these patients. And uh, this is an example of a patient with a massive mycetoma. He had the medical treatment and that after a few months after the treatment was this. We are providing them with free surgery. Hospital at Soba provide them with this care and we are providing our young colleagues with training in mycetoma surgery. We had a guideline for the mycetoma and hope that will be adopted by the WHO soon, these guidelines. The center was the first to use the ultrasound for the diagnosis of my stoma, and that was published at the British Journal of Surgery some time ago. And again, my colleague Imad Abdin from the center was the first to report on the cytology of the mycetoma, and my colleague Badreddin was the first to report on the cell block as a method of diagnosis of mycetoma and that was published recently. Ultra, ultrasound and the, and the MRI now are the two important tools for the diagnosis of mycetoma in the center there. And recently, my colleagues in the center reported on a new MRI grading system for the diagnosis and the management of mycetoma, and that was published last year. Again, Professor Hassan and the other group reported for the first time on the tissue diagnosis and classification and typing of the tissue reaction against mycetoma infection, stage one and stage two. My colleagues again reported for the first time on the MRI, or oh sorry, in the um, ERC, uh, in the in the genotyping of the mycetoma, and the PCR was the first firstly used by my colleague Abdullah Osman from the center as well. Again, the group was the first to use an immunocompetent rat as a model for the mycetoma. 
and we manage to produce the same, the same granuloma seen in the human being and the histology was typical. And this is a good start for doing a research on these animals to see the immune system of this, this, and this, and this uh, animals with mastoma infection, and drug trials and other, 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 other activities. The center has published a lot on the clinical, basic sciences, and epidemiology of mastoma, and we have more than 80 publications in mastoma. Recently, we published the chapter of mastoma in Bela Love, the 26th edition. And um, I'm very glad to say that, this is part of the publication, I'm very glad to say that there was a spotlight in Nature Journal, a very prestigious journal, on the mycetoma activities. I hope it will work. This is the link. Yeah. Yeah, this is the spotlight in Nature, the Middle East edition, on the mycetoma and this is, again, this is, uh, I think this is a very good start for um, doing international research. The center and our colleagues in, 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 in Holland are publishing a lot in mycetoma, and uh, our group was considered by Biomed Expert website as the, the most publishing group in mycetoma. The center has a very good collaboration with Erasmus Medical Center in Holland, Newcastle University, and Utrecht, Univer Utrecht University in, in, in Holland, Cambridge, and, and other centers. <coughs> Undergraduates and postgraduate students having opportunity to come to see the center and to have research as well. We're having a good number of overseas students coming for a Cheng program in the center there. I'm very proud one of the colleague here from Dublin. She came and spent some of her um, exchange program in the center there. You can see her photo in, this, in the website there. Yes. <laughs> She's sitting behind. Uh, again, for the education purpose, for education purpose, we had a virtual mycetoma patient campus at University of Khartoum website. Very interactive. You can go, there is no password, you can log in as a guest. Uh, this is And then you can follow this. You can go to the campus here. And you see, uh, at least, this is, this is some of the breast stuff on this, but... And here you can see a lot of patients with different mycetoma sites. And this is the brain mycetoma. Very interactive, you can go, you can have some questions, you have to answer it and go to the other step. And then you can see the treatment, you can see this and this. <coughs> and then even you can go to some quiz. And this is an interesting case with brain mycetoma. He was seen there. Yeah, I think this is a video clip on the surgery itself done by Mr. Bab at a sharp teaching hospital. And you can see there's a lot of activities, quiz, answers, and questions. For the continuing professional development activities, we're having, we are having regular courses. We had the fifth international conference of mycetoma in Sudan. We had the third international conference as well. And this is part of the social activities. And this is, this is Dr. Tabida. She did a lot of work in the center there when she was a Minister of Health, but that was not successful. And this is part of the activities. Had a lot of international meetings and activities locally and internationally in the region. Regarding the, this is the most important part of the center, and that is the 
community development activities while providing these patients at the village level with health care uh, advice and health education. Um, some of you may be one of the students that time here. This is Hatim or Hatim or Hiba or Lam. All of them now are senior consultants. This in the 90s, we went to Jazeera area where Abguta Center where establish um, um, a camp or a campaign for the for the activity for the patient care there. This is this is Muhammad Omar Bilal, you can see him in the center here. He was a student that time. This is health education session in the village. This is Professor Al Hassan and Professor Mahjoub. Again, despite their ages, they are always there in these in these villages, seeing patients and giving advice. We said this is not enough for these patients. We established in one of the villages where Macedonia is endemic a center there, because these patients cannot move from the village to Adwaim and then to Khartoum to come for this. In in, in that village. We have a campaign with a medical student from Bakhtaruda University. We had a lot of activities there. We had health education sessions. This is a clinic run by one of the staff of the Macedonia Center. <coughs> we had a small lab in that village. And this is a house to house health education session by one of the medical students. And we were very lucky to have a support from one of the local NGO in Sudan, Japanese uh, NGO, supported us to establish a theater in that village. <coughs> and this is the health, center, health education session. We had a lot of uh, posters for the, for, the, for the people there, for the student, for the housewife. Uh, telling them about the mastoma, trying to prevent it, to come early, and this and this and this. And uh, this is the theater in the village. It was a, actually as a health center, or even it is not a health, it is a dressing, dressing, dressing um, point. And then we managed to bring all the stuff of the theater there. This is the staff from Sobo Hospital. You can see we have a good lamps and a good tables and good monitors. This is the water taking up to the reservoir by the, by the nurse and one of the people from the village there because there are problems with water in the village. And then we did almost in the last two months more than 60 operations in the village with a good safety measurement, this is a monitor in the in the, in the, in the, in the, in the theater there. <clears throat> so it is, it is better, to, we said that it's better to go to the village and to see the patient there, many of them there, other, otherwise they will continue to have the problem, they are not able to come to big centers for, for treatment and for management. It is tough, uh, it is very difficult because we have to go over the weekend, we spend about three days there with the whole staff from Soba. Um, it is very expensive because you have to cater for the meals and this and this and this and this. But we had a lot of support from the village, in the village people there. Very grateful, very thankful for the work we did for them. We had a lot of brochures for health education. And this is trying to raise the awareness of the people about the mycetoma, about not going to the native treatment, about the problems with native treatment, herbal treatment there. And we had a lot of support from some NGOs in Sudan for producing these brochures. We are having a website for the mycetoma. And again, you can see a lot of our activities there in, the, in this website. And there is a video film here again, Mashagal. Um, and there is a lot of a lot of activities in the website here, very educational. These people are very poor. 
from a very low socioeconomic status. This, uh, this is a group of patients in the outpatient clinic at Sobo Hospital some time ago. You can see how depressed these people are. They are always down, they are always depressed from low socioeconomic status. So we established a mycetoma support society for these patients. We managed to talk to the people at the Zaka uh, um, Fund to try to support this. But again, nothing happened from there. With this support from this Japanese organization, we managed to establish the center at the village called Landel's Village. We now have a center there, we have a theater there. We are providing them with the surgical treatment and some of the medical treatment as well. And, uh, and um, lastly, we tried to organize an international body, and that is called the Mycetoma International Consortium. And we are trying through this consortium to raise fund to provide these patients with treatment, especially antifungal treatment, which is very expensive. It may cost up to 10 million Sudanese pounds, the treatment for one patient. Imagine such an amount of money patient have to spend to get this treatment. We have a Facebook face, a Facebook page, and again this is trying to raise the awareness of the society and the people about the mycetoma, trying to have support for these patients. We had a lot of international visitors. This is the um, WHO representative in Sudan. He is a very active person, very supportive. Through his activity, we managed to put the mycetoma in the neglected diseases list, which it was a very long journey with a long gestation. It was a very difficult journey to reach Geneva to be part of the you know, WHO. Uh, again, we managed to bring about 17 ambassadors in Khartoum from, United, from the European and African countries. They tried to help the center, but again, the sanction against Sudan was an important obstacle not to achieve a lot with these people. But we are trying our best. We established the Mycetoma National Control Program at the Ministry of Health. But <coughs> in spite of the fact that there was an official agreement between the Ministry of Health, between the University of Khartoum, but nothing happened. They are not believed that mycetoma it is a problem. I'm not sure what, for what reason, I'm not sure of that. You will ask me about the budget of the center, I will say there is no regular budget for the center. We are doing our best to raise funds for these patients, but we are trying to, to carry on with this mission. I am sure we are going to have some financial crisis or some mistake, but we are going to continue doing this. Uh, the research is good because we are having international collaboration with Erasmus Medical Center, with Utrecht, and this is the this is Holland, and this is Rotterdam, and this is the Erasmus Medical Center. We had a lot of collaborative work. We had two PhD students, and we had a lot of work going on with them there. As I mentioned recently, we managed to convince the WHO that mycetoma it is a neglected problem. And again, as I mentioned, that journey was a long, with a long gestation, with a difficult labor, and with a lot of obstacles. And eventually the mycetoma now it is part of the neglected diseases. And we hope through this WHO activities, we're going to help these patients. We're going to look and the means and ways to eradicate mycetoma as a life mutilating disease through four important things. Novel treatment and diagnostic tools, research, prevention, and the important activity it is educate the patients and our colleagues about the mycetoma itself. It's a teamwork. We work together over the, over the years. And those who work at Soba, Babikir, or Abdurrahman, 
Remember, this was at the outpatient department. We still believe on this, and this is Sob Hospital. And I would like to acknowledge the work done in the center and in the Sudan and around the globe on mycetoma. And these are the people who did a lot of work on mycetoma in 19, from 1904 till now. Uh, once again, I would like to express my sincere thanks and gratitude for the union, for the hospitality, and for the kindness. And thank you very much. It is, this is a very difficult question actually, the one million dollar question of having a vaccine for my stomach, because it's still we're struggling in the root of infection of my stomach. Still there is no very clear evidence that my stomach it is traumatic in nature. A lot of people, they believe that the stoma is traumatic inoculation of the organism, the subcutaneous tissue. But uh, it is not very much that thing. There is no much evidence about that because many of the patients with mastoma has no history of local trauma at the mastoma side. And despite the fact that sometimes we see some sore in the mastoma legion themselves, and still there is a lot of talk about the root of infection. <laughs> 